Hey guys, Nick here and this is my Linux experiment and uh, I'd like to do a little update on what uh, is uh, planned for Juno. So the uh, developers of Elementary, especially Daniel Fauré, uh, I pronounce it uh, in, as I will in French, uh, Daniel Fauré, which is the lead developer and creator of Elementary OS, just put out a new update on uh, Medium a few days ago and uh, to tell us a little more about what we can expect in Elementary OS. So let's uh, start this up. Uh, the first thing they're gonna add is a little shortcut overlay. So when you tap what they call the command key, but I guess it's gonna be the super key, so the Windows key if you like, on a Windows computer, you're gonna see an overlay of the keyboard shortcuts you can have. Of course, if that doesn't float your boat, uh, you can always use this key uh, to show as well the applications menu, or uh, doing nothing, of course, if you'd rather. So instead of pressing uh, the command or super key plus space to show the app menu, just like so, uh, you can just press the normal super key and it will show the uh, app menu. Uh, you will also be able to switch uh, the compose key, uh, which I don't think you can as of now. Uh, yes, that is new actually. That is the new compose key, which is the context menu key on some keyboards, the, the little uh, key with a square with a few lines on it which is a menu key. Uh, so yes, uh, you can also have a new pointer acceleration setting, uh, which allows you to have a uh, mouse going faster as uh, soon as you move it uh, faster. So if you have a big screen, it's gonna allow you to reach the hot corners like this, for example, uh, easier and faster. Uh, the Bluetooth settings uh, have been reworked a little bit, uh, so the discovery of the device will be now uh, automatically done right in there uh, without the old uh, Bluetooth uh, device discovery wizard that you had uh, before. Uh, you will also get some location services and privacy improvements, uh, which has a, it's going to basically take uh, help from an API, which will tell you when the apps need to allow this location, and you will be able to allow or deny that, just as you would on your Android phone, for example. Um, uh, that's a little nice addition. Uh, for code, so what is, what is called uh, today Scratch, uh, which is the text editor, as you can see, it has been reworked a lot to be a real uh, IDE. So you can switch, uh, well, you already had tabs, but you have a nice project view right there, a few more options uh, to switch between themes, to have a darker theme, for example. Uh, which will change the code view and the UI as well, uh, so you can have an entirely dark view uh, in a few clicks. Uh, there is a little uh, commenting view uh, with Control M, which allows you to toggle the commenting out of uh, select lines, so that's going to save you some time to comment code that you don't want to run or compile. Uh, yes, they moved the folder manager plugin, so the thing you can see here uh, in the core of the app, so you can have a deeper project integration. And you can also open in uh, some files, so you can open in, you can open directly a file from this browser here in a uh, in a web browser or uh, directly to get the view of this file in your uh, file browser. Uh, the App Center is going to be reworked a little bit, uh, so you have the Updates tab which is now called Install Tabs, uh, which will show you a little badge here, as you maybe you can see it if you zoom in, yes, a little badge for updates. Uh, so as well as having them here and in Notification, you will see them in this little tab here. Uh, it will also show you your currently installed apps, uh, which there was no way to do uh, before. So as of now, if I want to see where, which apps I have installed, I can only hope they had an update and get to them here. Uh, if there has been no update, I cannot see them, I have to look for them. So now they will be here in the Install tab. Uh, this will show you more clearly when you have something to do or to act on. Uh, there is also the total download side of, size of the app, which will tell you how much space it's going to use. Uh, they're also uh, putting in the improvements for paying for apps. Uh, they auto-format card numbers, which is just a nice uh, way to see how your card number looks and make sure you didn't do any mistakes. And uh, you can also hide stuff uh, when you are not focused on them. You can hide the, uh, the control code and the number uh, when you are not clicking on them so that if somebody is speaking uh, above your shoulder, it will, they will not see the, uh, the data. Uh, and there's a few misc improvements, such as the screenshot tools, which will append uh, a little uh, suffix uh, just to tell you when you are taking screenshots on a high DPI display. Uh, 
So they will be uh, they will be scaled automatically when you import them into some tools. Uh, the window manager will show you a little feedback when you do this, for example, uh, to tell you that it's gonna maximize. So for example, if I did this, it's gonna uh, make the window bigger to show you that yes, it will resize it or tile it on the side here. Uh, the volume indicator uh, will properly toggle mute and unmute uh, by clicking on this one of these giant speaker icons here. Uh, they added uh, new sound effects, which is something I talked about a little bit in uh, my previous Juno video. And of course, code cleaning and bug fixing. Uh, they are announcing 440 closed, 450 sorry, closed issues uh, with the Juno beta. And uh, well, it's going to be more stable and uh, more uh, usable. So they are still developing it, of course, uh, they still don't have a nice release date as of now, uh, but uh, I will link the article in the description below if you want some more details on what they have added and if you missed this article. And uh, well, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you learned a few things about what's new in Juno, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!